Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that brings you the rulings on Islamic duties and practices by the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. Tonight's discussion will be on Nijasat impurities. I'm your host Mohsin Shah and this is your co-host Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum Sheikhna. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Sheikhna, let's begin the discussion by do you have any sort of hadith or any sort of narration in regards to Nijasat and why it is haram or anything like that? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Initially Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wise and created the mankind according to his wisdom So when he made things Haram or halal or wajib, it's all according to his wisdom. Now, there's a narration I would like to mention now before we begin with the Islamic rulings with regard to the Njasat and impurity. It is a narration from Mufadl ibn Umar, one of the loyal companions of Imam as Sadiq. He says, أي الصادق عليه السلام أخبرني جعلت فداك لما حرم الله تبارك وتعالى الخمر والميتة والدم ولحم الخنزير. He says that I asked Imam Al Sadiq peace be upon him that why did Allah سبحانه وتعالى made it حرام and forbidden for the one to consume wine. Corpse, blood, and pork meat. Mm-hmm. The Imam peace be upon him here responds to Mufaddal. He says, "فَقَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى لَمْ يُحَرِّمْ ذَلِكَ عَلَى عِبَادِهِ وَأَحَلَّ لَهُمْ سِوَاهُ رَغْبَةً مِنْهُ." He says that the Imam salam Allah عليه with this regard that Allah subhanahu wa taala when he made it. Haram and forbidden, it wasn't with the desire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It wasn't with his interest, just a desire, just a vain desire, you know, with regard to forbidding things. Then the Imam says, وَأَحَلَّ لَهُمْ سِوَاهُ رَغْبَةً مِنْهُ فِي مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا زُهْدًا فِي مَا أَحَلَّ لَهُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it wasn't in a situation of in one side to make things forbidden due to his desire or okay. to actually use austerity in let, let's say uh, with regard to making things haram or halal however the imam responds لَكِنَّهُ خَلَقَ الْخَلْقَ وَعَلِمَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مَا تَقُومُ بِهِ أَبْنَانُهُمْ وَمَا يُصْلِحُهُمْ فَأَحَلَّ لَهُمْ وَأَبَاحَهُ فَضْلًا مِنْهُ عَلَيْهِمْ The Imam Salaam Allah says that he made these things halal and haram mm-hmm. it's all to do with what benefits that mankind with regard to his body what mm-hmm. makes his body strength and strong and beneficial so when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Holy Quran that for example eating pork meat is haram or drinking wine is haram then it's all to do with the benefit for the mankind, mm-hmm. for his body, for his soul, for his social life, um, to do with psychology and mm-hmm. all types of uh, attachments to the human being. So when it's haram, then there's actually benefit. Mm-hmm. So Allah is wise when he created the mankind to benefit him and not to actually harm him according to this narration. Then the Imam says, وَعَلِمَ مَا يَضُرُّهُمْ فَنَهَاهُمْ عَنْهُ وَحَرَّمُهُ عَلَيْهِمْ So he knew that Allah the Almighty that, for example, this particular thing 
or meat became haram and forbidden because it will actually harm mm -hmm. that person when he eats it. So or the blood, for example. So we're saying it's, it's for our own benefit and our own definitely, health. Def definitely. That these things have been the first thing forbidden. is the benefit <coughs> and the health in this dunya and the reward for the hereafter. Ascent. When you obey the Creator, when you obey the wise, then of course you'll be rewarded for being patient on these issues, the haram issues, the forbidden mm. issues, the um, obligatory and wajibat issues. So you get actually a reward in the hereafter as well. Let us now discuss more on what is actually nijasat, what is the meaning of nijasat? We have something called dirty mm -hmm. and we have something called impure. Okay. Now, something that is dirty with regard to the hygiene, of course you have to uh, wash that dirty thing is to do with hygiene and cleanliness. Um, Could you give an example of dirt? Are you talking about some mud or like mud, ink? Mud, ink, anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to eat, for example, you make yes. sure you wash your hands. You, you wash the fruits you buy from the market. Yes. It's dirty um, and so forth. So it's to do with, with dirtiness and so forth in the bacteria issues and, and mm -hmm. so forth. So when it comes to the impurity and najasat, it's all to do with faith and uh, religious issues. That okay. I cannot, for example, um, eat something in najis because, because it's haram, it's forbidden. And I cannot pray with najis clothes or body mm -hmm. and actually perform that worship before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So basically, najasa and impurity are something in which the sharia brought and ordered us to actually follow these instructions. Otherwise, we'll have trouble with uh, the worship, the ibadat. We'll have uh, trouble with eating things which are najis, impure, and so forth. So, what items are on this list of najasat? As in, we, we talked about wine, blood, uh, um, pork, meat. Are there any other najasat in, in that list? Yeah, there are categories of najasat. Let's begin with uh, the first and the second category of najasa. The first one is the urine. Okay. And the second one is the feces. Okay. So the so body waste, waste of the human yes. being and animals in overall. Now we have to break down um, uh, those two types of najasa with regard to the animals and human beings. Initially, any human being's waste, body waste, in terms of the urine or the feces, is najis, okay. be it a baby or mm -hmm. an adult. Okay. Um, urine and the feces, the feces of um, the human being is najis. In other words, you have to purify it if you want to pray, for example, or if your hands are stained with najasa, then you have to actually wash them. Okay. So when it comes to um, the actual item itself, the substance, urine or feces, is that ever tahir or does that remain nijasa throughout its whole creation, its whole life? As in, if I have a sample, a urine sample, which we give in hospitals, that sample, it, it can that be, can that made, can that be become uh, made pure tahir by adding any substances to it or anything like that? Or does that continuously remain najis? The, the najis substance by itself, the inherent najis, would okay. remain najis forever. Okay. Be it a blood, be it um, urine, feces, unless you mix it with, a, let's say, uh, stream water, for example, uh -huh. and it just disappears, then that becomes a tahir. Okay. Otherwise, itself, by itself, it, it remains najis mm -hmm. uh, forever. Now, with regard to the najasa, as I've mentioned, the human's feces and, and urine is najis. And also, any haram meat animal. Okay. Which has the gushing blood when it's slaughtered and killed. Okay. Th that gushing blood from that haram animal, also that haram animal that we cannot eat, also the feces and the, the urine is also najis and impure. Okay. Such as the fox, the wolf, lions, cats, mm -hmm. for example. Okay. Any gushing animal when it's slaughtered. Okay, when it's slaughtered. Right. So you're talking about when, when they, they cut from here, 
if the blood gushes out yes you're right that that animal is considered the haram, haram animal of course it has to be we'd, a haram we'd, animal would come to the halal so animal in, in with, with, in with sheep and cows does the blood gush now with regard to the halal animals such as the sheep cows and um, let's say donkey for example mm. these types of animals because they're the halal meat you can actually eat them uh, then their urine and feces are tahir oh, okay. they're pure oh, okay. also the second type of animals are the insects mm -hmm. that also they are tahir in terms of uh, their feces and, and urine as well okay. and of course um, there are another type of haram meat animals which has, has no gushing blood such as the snakes for example okay. and crocodiles uh -huh. if you slaughter them you won't see any gushing blood from them yes so also that type of animals i think they're called reptiles reptiles yes reptiles um, you and feces are also tahir okay as long as they have no gushing blood when mm -hmm. they're slaughtered okay uh Sheikhna, what about the feces uh, and urine of f birds for example me and you live in london i'm sure when you park your car in a tree you come back you've got a lovely surprise of the ziara of the pigeons have come to see your car um what about that sort of waste uh, of an animal is that considered najis the waste of the pigeons or the birds and the sea animals okay they're also tahir again oh. Um, all types of birds, the ones that eat, let's say, vegetables, okay. seeds and so forth, mm -hmm. and the ones eat meat. Yes. All its urine and uh, feces are all tahir, as well as the sea animals. There's a fish, the fish's mm -hmm. uh, urine and feces also tahir, so they are pure. Accent. Some people might ask that, what about the cat, for example? Okay. Now the cat, as I've mentioned, it's also najis. You mm. can have cat at home and yes. um, as a pet, but you have to make sure that you avoid the urine and the feces of the cat. Is that najis? Yes, of course. Okay, so the cat's waste, because a lot of people have cats at home as a pet, yeah. uh, because you know th they're not considered najis in terms of touching them. Um, and But you're saying that the, the waste of a cat is najis. It is indeed. Um, but we have to also refrain from its um, the uh, the hair, basically, okay. in the time of the salah. So if you actually you uh, if you carry a, a cat and you have it on your lap, for example, you have to make sure there's no hair attached mm -hmm. to your body or clothes when you pray. So we, just to make sure that you avoid that. Otherwise, you can have a cat, and if you avoid its najasa, then that's fine. Okay, lovely. So, what's next on the list of uh, najasa? The next najasa is the semen okay. or the sperm of, of mm -hmm. the human being as well as the, any animal that gushes blood when it's slaughtered mm -hmm. even if it's a sheep or a cow okay. so that exception for the sheep and the cow and okay. the halal animals mm -hmm. is just that sperm or the um, ejaculation of uh, the okay. sperm from so the, the, human the sperm animals. of human and animals gushing blood yeah that have gushing blood you're right yeah. that is also nudges yes so when we talk about sperm we know that there's only there's two ways to release sperm there's one when you have you go to sleep and there's one when you have marital relations correct um is it how important is it that we purify ourselves as soon as this najasa comes of course i mean as we usually do when we go to the loo in terms of uh, purifying the urine likewise you would purify uh, uh, the najasa from that part and then for the uh, for the sperm or for the the semen you have to actually do the ghusl which is called ghusl janaba okay. that will inshallah will cover this in the next episode inshallah with regards to the semen I mean obviously it can be of a nuisance sometimes for males as we wake up and uh, there's najasa on us how quickly do we have to remove that najasa or can we you know go back to sleep or you know carry on with our day without removing the najasa the najasa to be removed is is mainly for the purpose of the ibadah and worship which mm -hmm. is the salah the wajib prayer yes or any even mustahab prayer you have to make sure you're pure 
from the najasa. So it's mainly for the, naj for the uh, issue of the salah and, and so forth. Otherwise, you can remain with your najasa. But it's better to purify it. But as I've said, um, the main purpose for purifying is to have a pure body for the wajib salah. What's next on the list? The next one is the corpse or the carcass of a dead animal, for example. Okay. Now, animal which is uh, being killed, uh, let's say, without slaughtering towards the qibla and mm -hmm. all the conditions of having yes. a halal meat. Mm -hmm. Let's say you would shoot a sheep with a gun and then it dies. Yes. Or, for example, that animal dies naturally due to disease and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, having such condition with an animal that gushes blood, then that corpse is najis. Mm -hmm. Which means if you touch it, you have to purify, purify your hands and your body. And of course, we can't eat it because it's not halal mm -hmm. with regard to... Uh, the halal meat animals such as the sheep and the cow mm -hmm. but because they died naturally or being killed uh, and slaughtered not in the position of the qibla and with all the conditions of mm -hmm. the halal meat then they are najis and we cannot consume them and same thing applies to the haram meat animals such as the lion okay. cats for example uh, wolf and so forth the corpse are also najis so, Shaykhna, would you, in the hadith you mentioned also that blood is uh, najis. Um, is that on the list as well? And when, what sort of what types of blood are najis? Yes, blood is the next category. Basically, the blood of any human being and also any animal which has gushing blood when it's slaughtered is also najis. Okay. So, for example, if you slaughter a sheep and the blood comes out of this sheep that blood that came out of that sheep is najis likewise if you let's say kill or hunt a fox or a tiger the blood came c coming out from that a haram animal considered najis. is also najis okay what about uh, we know that females go through a certain uh, biological phase uh, once a month the blood that's being released of course. is that considered najis as well that blood is also najis yes right but also we have another type of blood which is not najis okay. um, and that type of blood is to do with animals which have no gushing blood okay. when it's killed. So like fish? Such as ahsant fish for example, mosquitoes for example, mm -hmm. um, animals, um, insects for example, I mean the blood of the flies, Yes. you know small flies, very, very little. Yes. butterfly for example, mm -hmm. these blood are not najis. Okay. So you don't have to refrain from them. Okay. Of course, for the hygiene purpose, you can clean them, wash them. But as a najasa, you can still pray while they're on your body, for example. So, Sheikh, I've got a question that was emailed into us. And that was regarding the halal animals which are slaughtered in a halal way. So we've got a, a lamb. We've slaughtered it in a halal way, facing Kipla. Everything's legit. Now we've you know, skinned it. We've started to cut the meat up and everything. And we found blood remaining. In, in, in the body of the animal Is that blood considered najis? Whatever remains inside the body of that sheep or lamb or cow Remains tahir and pure So only the najasa is what came out In the beginning of the slaughtering of that animal And the remaining blood becomes tahir inside the body So you don't have to avoid it Ah, you you've talked about uh, feces, urine, blood, um, what's n what else is uh, on the list? Yes, the next category is dog and pig. Okay, so najis animals. They are the only unique najis animals on this planet uh, okay. which are entirely najis. So, so you mean they're continuously najis? Continuously and everything in their body is najis. The oh, skin, wow. the hair, um, Saliva, um, the, eyes, the nails, oh everything, wow. everything. So, um, Subhanallah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is wise, and He knew why did He uh, made these two animals specifically uh, najis, and specifically the dog, in which we we, we see a lot of uh, people make use of them. Very beneficial animals in terms of security, mm -hmm. guarding, uh, very loyal to their 
people, owners, for example. Yes. And um, of course, I mean, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is wise, so He He, he knows why did uh, these animals, you know, became najis and in which we have to re refrain from them. You know, for example, the dog we cannot actually. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I mean, we can actually touch them, but we have to make sure we pure our hands. And, and hands from the najas. Of course, if it's dry, if the pig or the dog is dry. Yes. And our hands are dry as well. There's no uh, reason for making them pure. Okay, so Najas has not transferred if your hand is dry and the, the item is also dry. So Najas has only transferred through a medium which is normally liquid, correct? Exactly. Uh, the, the Najas occurs and takes place when the moisture okay. transfers from one substance to another. So, Sheikhna, uh, what else is on the topic? Uh, what else is on the list of Najasat? Yeah, the next category is wine. Okay, wine. Which is known as Khamar as well. Khamar. So, is this wine in particular or alcohol, intoxicating alcohol in general? Anything that, that intoxicates and has the muskir, as they say, okay. uh, is Najis and haram to consume. Does that include drugs? Because some drugs are, don't have alcohol in them. Um, their powder or their certain substances, but they do cause intoxication. They do cause like this high. Are they considered najis as well, or is it just wine in particular we're talking about here? With regard to drugs like hashish, um, which are solid, not liquid, the only for uh, najis ones are the liquid ones, okay. which is the wine. Okay. But the, the solid ones, which is like the, the drugs and the hashish, they're not najis. Okay, so they remain just... tahir and pure, ah. but uh, the ones... But that doesn't mean that it is halal to use oh, those that, substances. That's a different issue, of course. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's you need that clear, yeah. that they don't... Of course, you yeah. don't have to do ghusl or something if you touch uh, you know, some sort of drugs. But permissibility of usage, we're not saying that. Say Sadiq doesn't allow of us course, to yeah, use of course. That, no, drugs. The like drugs that. are not allowed to be used, of course. Uh -huh. Okay, so back, back to alcohol. Um, so you're, you're saying that it, can, it, it consists of all of the different types of alcohols so uh, because we mentioned wine what about beer or spirits or uh, whiskey and things like that of course any intoxicated liquid is haram to consume and najis impure as well so beer is also as, as known arabic fuqa' that we have a narration with regard to this specific beer that the imam salam says Khamrun It is a, um, a kind of um, drink or alcohol that the people made it um, didn't really care about it. So they, some people used to drink it. Some okay. of the Muslim sects, they actually allow it and they drink it. Okay. So the Imam said, no, in the belief of Ahlul Bayt and the Islam is actually haram to consume um, beer, which is known as fuqa' and it's najis according to Sayyid Sadr Shirazi's fatwa. Okay. Shaykhna, what about the alcohols? Uh, because we know that there are many types of alcohols. The ones that intoxicate us, that's for, for beverages or for, for those who want to consume it. But we have alcohols that are industrial alcohols. We have alcohols in shampoo, in soap, in perfume. These aren't the same as in they have a different chemical structure also, they don't actually intoxicate you at all. Is this alcohol, are these alcohols also najis? These types of alcohols in used in such as um, in medicine, in soaps, in shampoos and so forth, as long as they're not intoxicated and there's no muskir as they say, then it's halal to use and it's tahir to use. There's no problem with that at all. It's just the issue of intoxication within okay. uh, the usage, either to be eaten or used as a cream, for example, as a cream lotion, for example, for the body. If it's intoxicated, then it's haram, of course. It's, it's najis to be used. So you have to purify your, your hands mm -hmm. from this najasa afterwards for the prey, for the next prey, for the wudu, for example. So yes, we can use soaps, med medications, and so forth, which has alcohol. As long as there are no um, intoxication and, as they say, muskar inside the substance 
of these uh, items and products. Shaykhan, what about when people use alcohol in foods? Sometimes uh, alcohol is added to the food and burnt off. Uh, so, you know, I know with the Italian food, um, they, they, when, while they're cooking, they're putting some wine and stuff and they're cooking. But as they're cooking it, the alcohol will be burnt off. Is that considered najis? Well, the minute or the second the alcohol, that intoxicated alcohol, let's say mm. champagne or Holy wine or anything yeah. else, touches that food in the pan, makes that food najis straight away. Okay. So even if the alcohol evaporates, still that food is najis and haram to consume. Okay. What about certain foods that we don't add alcohol to it, but while we're cooking the food, alcohol may be released. For example, if we're, when you make apple pie, we take apples and you add a bit of water and you have to boil it and you have to like, um, you know, uh, I don't know what the proper word is for it, but you have to make it into like some sort of a stew, some sort of uh, a paste. So you're warming up the apples and stuff like that. When warming up fruit, there's always a danger of alcohol being released unintentionally. Not that we want to make alcohol, unintentionally, we're trying to make an apple pie here. So I've got the water, I've got the apple, I'm heating it up now, it's cooking, it's getting softer, it's becoming a paste. What about then, if alcohol is actually released in that process, unintentionally, is that considered nudges as well? Well, we have two issues here with regard to cooking or boiling fruits specifically and food. With regard to, let's say, fermenting, the process of fermentation of barley, for yes. example, that actually produces, uh, as a result, the beer, which mm. we just mentioned now. And that becomes actually haram to consume and najis. Uh, also, we have the, the, the grape juice. Yes. If it's boiled, mm -hmm. and also haram to consume. Yes, so I saw the so wine, obviously. Another issue as well. But other items, such as uh, you mentioned the apple pie, for example, to actually cook and boil the apple, um, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, mm -hmm. you can consume the apple, which has been cooked. And um, the only thing that is to do with, with the grapes, grape uh -huh. juice, which is haram to consume if it's boiled, mm -hmm. reaching that le level of boil. And um, even if, just, if that, for example, apple produced some kind of acid, mm -hmm. um, as long as it's, it's not intoxicated, then it's halal to use and consume. Okay. What about if, um, you know, if I'm eating somewhere and a drop of alcohol falls into my food. In fact, what if a drop of nijasa of any sort, eating and drinking and nijasa falls into this, is this, uh, does this make my food uh, um, najis or is it still tahir and I can consume it? Basically, there are two issues here. Number one, if the food was solid okay. or if it was liquid, so if the food was like a soup mm -hmm. and you have a drop of blood or alcohol uh, dropped inside that uh, specific pan or plate, for example, if it's something liquid, then you have to avoid eating or drinking that particular uh, mm -hmm. food because actually when it's uh, dropped in that liquid, the whole thing becomes nudges, similar to the cup of water mm -hmm. for example if it's a solid food such as meat rice um, and so forth you can actually just remove that section, section that was um, contacted with the blood you just remove it and then you can consume the rest of the food uh, peacefully without any worry about the okay. whole food. that's that's fine Sheikhna. Uh, if it was you know uh, like a small chicken sheesh like chicken cubes or if it was uh, rice or something like that but what if it's a big piece of meat and that meat is moist as well it's got juices flowing from it um, then what do I just cut the part that it's, it's been touched with and I can throw that away and consume the rest or is the whole thing now been affected as long as that drop of, of najis of blood for example did not reach the whole section of the meat then you mm -hmm. can consume okay otherwise uh, if it was in a way that you had many small drops splashed mm -hmm. on the whole meat or the whole chicken then 
you have to avoid it or you just wash the chicken or the meat and then you can eat it again. Okay. So by purifying the chicken or the meat or the rice, for example, you can go back and eat it again. So that's another solution for those who wish to um, eat something which became nejis. So just wash it and eat it again. Shane, the final question on alcohol. Sometimes doctors do prescribe us to drink alcohol for our heart conditions or from s certain other um, diseases are we allowed to then consume this for medi medi medical purposes or should we as Muslims still stay away from it no there's no justification for us or reason to use alcohol for medication at all as long as we have other medications uh, especially in, in today's world where the medication has been developed and processed uh, in different fields even you can have let's say vegetarian uh, medications, medicines, um, all types of medicines are, are available in the market. So no reason to use alcohol at all in medication. Um, uh, even we have a narration that someone comes to the Imam alayhi salam and he asks that I've got a problem in my stomach and the doctor prescribed for me to consume alcohol. The Imam refrains him from using mm -hmm. uh, uh, this prescription, which is uh, alcohol. So no, there's no way uh, for us to consume alcohol for the purpose of medication. Thank you very much for joining us. And inshallah, we'll be here next week with a new discussion. Please join us on Ikhqam SOS. And if you have a question that you'd like to ask the Sheikh, please contact us on the details provided. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.